I got a phone call from the nurse in the emergency room. Scott had an accident at his workplace. I had fallen on something slippery and hit my head. I was found in the bathroom on the first floor of the office building. When I got to the emergency room, I kept giving them information, and I can tell the memories that I had of my previous life were leaving me. Scott is living with severe amnesia. He's forgotten 46 years of his life. So we teamed up with Dr. Phil to send him to see Dr. Neil Martin, one of the leading neurosurgeons in the country at UCLA Medical Center. And Dr. Martin has Scott undergo a state-of-the-art 3D MRI to see what could be causing him to forget his entire life. Dr. Martin, thanks for joining us and helping us out in what is a, a remarkable story. I want to show everyone how amnesia can occur, but more importantly, how do we form memories in the first place? Hey, in your daily life, you encounter so many things, your five senses are taking them all in, but you can't possibly remember everything that you see and do. There's such a thing as short-term memory. For instance, someone gives you a seven-digit phone number. You'll store that temporarily in your cortex, the outer part of your brain. That's a temporary memory. Meanwhile, your first Christmas that you remember, back when you were four years of age, opening that new tricycle, whatever the other present was, that's stored in your freezer. That's your long-term memory. This is what Scott has struggled with. When you form those long-term memories, you're creating new neuronal connections. And when that happens, they get stored deep within your brain. Your, your brain is literally saying, hey, this is information I want to keep. The limbic system plays a crucial role in this. Limbic system is involved in learning, emotions, and memory. The hippocampus is one area that stores memories, and then the amygdala is an area where purely emotional memories tend to be stored. And these areas really drive your brain to remember these sentinel events in your life, such as my wedding day. When Scott fell, it disrupted something in his brain, that part of his brain that recalled all these long-term memories. This is Scott's spec scan. The orange areas that light up show where blood flow is. You're about to see why that's a problem. This is a normal person, and see all that blood flow throughout all the areas of the brain. Well, Scott is clearly diminished when it comes to his blood flow, and we're not gonna get to Scott's 3D MRI just yet. Let's talk about how modern technology is helping us in cases like Scott's, which is so unique and difficult to figure out. You know, Travis, historically, we dealt with two-dimensional black and white images like this. Now using special software like this View One Image Station, we can plug in traditional black and white MRI scans and we can end up with a three-dimensional realistic looking view that gives us a comprehensive image of the surface of the brain so we can see whether there's atrophy of the inside components of the brain that you just demonstrated and also the brain blood vessels in great detail. Let's, let's take a look at what the scans show us. And so everyone understands what we're looking at here is the 3D MRI of Scott's actual brain. Right. We see a high resolution view of the entire surface. Now we see that the brain appears not to be excessively wrinkled or furrowed. That's a good sign because it, 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 when the brain looks like a prune, it's atrophied. The tissue has shrunken and, and melted away, uh, possibly as a re result of the injury or some other process. The brain tissue looks good. That means the structure of the brain for Scott is primarily intact, and we didn't find any hidden abnormality like a vascular malformation. We didn't find any small tumors. We didn't find the footprint of prior strokes. So that's all good. That's a good sign. When we look at the blood vessels in more detail, we can see there's no blockages. It's nice, smooth contour all the way up to the frontal lobes here. And as we look at this from every possible angle, we see that all the vessels look intact, they're filling well, they're not irregular as if they had an atherosclerotic plaque. So these are all key findings. Now they don't tell us exactly what the fundamental problem is. We're still left with this abnormal spec scan that suggests that it's not the, 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 the larger visible structures that are affected, it's something happening on a microscopic level. It's either the connections between neurons or the fact that critical neurons have dropped out of the circuitry and are not functioning normally at this point.